Hiya! Today I want to show you how to use rivets on your bags. Rivets are brilliant when you want to attach things like straps or pockets or reinforce areas on your bag very tightly and very securely. They're also amazing for attaching those items to your bags when you can't literally get all of those thick layers under your machine and we know how often that happens and they actually do look very very nice and I'm just about to show you how easy they are to attach. So I've got a bag here which has rivets on and as you can see the rivets on this particular bag are used to attach these leather straps to the bag and I don't know if you can see closely the leather strap itself is really really thick so sewing these leather straps onto the bag simply wouldn't be an option and even if I could I think you'll agree that it just wouldn't look as neat and tidy so not only are the rivets holding the strap onto the bag the rivets in of themselves are an attractive design feature so this is the front side of the rivet the cap of the rivet and this is what it looks like on the wrong side so this particular rivet uh, has a flat underside and I will show you about the kinds of rivets now and also the tools that you'll need. So today I'm not going to be using a rivet press. We're purely going to be working with hand tools and hammers and such. So let's talk about the kinds of rivets that you can buy. So when you go searching on the internet for rivets, you'll be looking for either single cap rivets or double cap rivets. And I will show you what a double cap rivet looks like now. Double cap simply means that both ends, the top and the bottom of the rivet, have a cap. So this double cap rivet, one end has a stalk, the other end has a cap. And the top, I suppose you could call it the hat, also has a cap. So that's how it looks, the top or bottom and top of bottom looks like that so yeah both ends have a cap hence the name double cap now rivets come in all sorts of different um heights and the shafts are also of different widths so naturally the heavier the items or layers that you want to hold together and the thicker then the taller the stalk that you'll need and also you might want a wider cap or narrower cap, depending on how wide or narrow your strap is, or maybe if you're using a small um, rivet on a small pouch, you'll need to keep things in proportion by choosing a smaller width rivet. So when you go shopping, pay attention to the width of the shaft and also the width of the cap so that you pick the right size for your project. So I'll show you what a single cap rivet looks like and there's no blinding signs to it. The top half of the rivet has a cap and the base of the rivet still looks a lot like the double cap rivet. However, the bottom side is flat. So rather than having a cap on the base, it's just flat. And um, I think you might have noticed that the rivets on my bag that I showed you a moment ago, they are single cap rivets. And that's what we're going to be working with today. So that's single cap rivets versus double cap rivets. Not very complicated and very, very easy to buy, super easy to buy. And again, single cap rivets also come in different heights and different widths. So be wary of that when you go shopping for them. So what you'll need to do use to set the rivets are, you'll need two metal items. You'll also you'll need a hand setting tool and you'll also need an anvil. So a word about the hand setting tool. You can buy hand setting tools which have got a domed, or shall I say a concave end and a flat end. When buying hand setting tools, it is really worth 
ensuring that you buy a double ended one in that one end is concave and one end is flat. So the concave end is what you use to place over the domed part of the rivet. And if it's flat, should it happen to be flat, then you would use the flat side. So yes, um, it doesn't matter too much how um, wide the hand setting tools are because most rivets aren't going to be much wider than this hand setting tool. Um, so the hand setting tools don't come in different widths as such, but they do sometimes come as single sided. So always buy the double sided variety. So that's the hand setting tool. So the, you imagine if you place the domed part on your cap and this is the part that you would hammer onto. You also need a surface on which to hammer your rivets and you, they are called anvils. So anvils come in two different flavours. So I'm holding them both here. They're usually disc shaped um, or they're sometimes rectangular shaped, but they're always metal. So this particular one is flat on both sides, which is fine, which is fine with, with, if you're always using the single cap rivets. So if we remember the single cap rivets, are flat on the underside. So if you're always using single cap rivets, then a single sided, both flat side anvil is fine. But if you are shopping for an anvil, you don't have one yet, it makes much more sense to get a double sided one like this. Double sided in that one side is flat and the other side is concave. So this way you can work with double cap rivets or single cap rivets, easy. The next thing that you'll also need is you'll also need a device to um, punch a hole in your project. So I always, always advocate whenever you're making a hole in your bag um, for anything, be that magnetic snaps, rivets, eyelets, purse locks, whatever, always, always make those holes a tiny bit too small because a tiny bit too small means that you are protecting the um, integrity of the fabric or in other words you're weakening it as less as is needed in order to attach your metal item and if you make the hole too big then it's easy for the rivet or the grommet or or the purse lock to slip out of your project so always try to make um, a smaller hole as you possibly can. So in for rivets, for most cases, unless you're working with a super strong, super thick material, or you've got lots of lots of layers, I find that the ideal item for making holes in your project is a tapered awl. So the lovely thing about the tapered awl is, as the name suggests, the hole is thinner to the point and widens as you go to the base. And the ace thing about tapered awls is if you use this to make a hole in your fabric, what it does is as opposed to breaking the fibres to make a hole, it simply pushes the fibres apart, thereby protecting the strength of the fabric because you haven't actually broken any of the fibres. Now, I do understand that if you have a super fat rivet, should you have a super fat rivet, or even if you're working with eyelets, then an awl isn't necessarily going to do the job. So the next thing up I would suggest is a hole punch. Um, I have Primvario hole punch. I love, I love using this. Um, it makes a slightly bigger hole than the awl would. And even if this hole isn't quite big enough, then what I'll do is I'll go in with the Prim Vario punch first, and then I might take super fine scissors and make a tiny scissor nick into that, that hole, just to see that if, if I can squeeze in this super fat eyelid or whatever into my project. Because like I say, all of the time, we're trying to make the hole for our eyelids or whatever, as small as we can get away with. So that's a word about the punching tools. The next thing you'll need is a hammer. Now, I suggest getting a rubber mallet as opposed to using a um, DIY metal hammer. This is because the good thing about um, rubber mallets is they're a little bit more gentle on your metal surface 
then they are um, metal to metal. So this helps prevent the splitting because that's the last thing if you want. You don't want caps to split. You don't want the shafts to bend or it's just you have the fall all the force that you need with a hammer from a rubber mallet. But perhaps it's slightly more gentle. So you're less likely to shatter or split or bend your metal of the eyelet and um, the good thing about these again very easily accessible they come in all sorts of different sizes very very cheap to buy well worth the money uh, and the last thing you'll need is you'll need a protective surface um, even though you are banging your eyelet onto an anvil you still don't really want to place the anvil on your work table uh, because then you'll just end up with little anvil shaped holes in the wood and you really don't want that so what i use is a cheapy just a cheap small chopping block and it wants to be small because this way a, ch a small chopping block can reach inside your bag so let's just say you want to put an eyelet on one side of your bag, maybe the front, then you'll need to be able to slip the chopping block inside your bag, then place the anvil on top, and then you can hammer away, safe in the knowledge that you're not going to damage anything. Right, so now I'm going to demonstrate just how I'm going to um, put some leather straps onto this bag that I'm making now. The leather straps look just like this. These are pre-made and as you can probably see there, the leather's quite thick. So as we said before, there is no stitching this onto any bag. No way. It's just too thick. And besides, I do like the look of the rivets and the straps on the bag. So, you know, I see the rivet as being a quick and attractive option to getting these straps onto my bag. And if I hold these close, you can see that these ready-made straps already have rivet holes made. So I don't have the faff of making the um, holes in the strap. But of course, if you'd made your own PU straps, which you obviously can, or heavy canvas straps, then you would need to pinch your, um, punch your own holes, either using the awl or a hole punch. So similar to the bag that I held up a moment ago, I've already gone ahead and attached one side of this leather strap uh, to the bag using these two eyelets here and now I'm going to show you how to attach the other side so let's have a quick tidy up of everything I'll also I'm going to need a tape measure and a pen so that I can mark the position of my straps before I rivet them in. Okay. And I'll move the camera so that you can more easily see what it is I am doing. Okay, so how is that? There we go, that's better. Right, so I now want to get this end of the strap and I'm going to attach it here. So by convention, lots and lots of strap ends happen to be five inches apart from each other. Often when you go to the shops and you see bag bag handles <laughs> and then and I you know I found it's just, you know, it, it's just a standard thing. But should you want a longer strap or maybe um, maybe your arm, your maybe your arm doesn't fit through as comfortably. There's absolutely nothing wrong with having the straps further apart or should you prefer um, closer together. But just as I said before, convention is that strap ends are often five inches apart from each other. So what I did was on this bag. I found the top edge centre and then I marked from the top edge centre two and a half inches from here to here and I've done the same here and I've marked it. I know you can't see but from the centre point to this point is two and a half inches and I'm just going to put the inside edge of this strap end here and I already know that I want this strap end to be 
three and a half centimeters up from this seam to the strap end. So I'm just going to grab my tape measure and make sure that this strap end is three and a half centimeters. There we go. And the last thing that I want to do to check for positioning is I want to ensure that this strap end is 90 is 90 degrees. Now, of course, if you prefer, there's nothing wrong. If you like the look of angling it, then by all means, angle it. Um, personally, I like the look of 90, de 90 degrees. So if you are super, super fastidious or fussy, then there's nothing wrong with, you know, measuring to check that it's 90 degrees. But I'm more than happy to eyeball it. Uh, and and that to me looks like it's 90 degrees so I'm going to hold so that's the strap so the strap is two and a half inches away from the center point and three and a half centimeters up from the seam sorry about mixing up my measurements there but after doing this for so long I've mi mixed up metric and imperial and I, I often do that so now I've got the positioning of the strap and I'm happy with it. The next thing to do is to get my chopping block and place it inside the bag. Because obviously when I go punching up the holes for, this, for these rivets, I don't want to go through to the other side of the bag. I'm only working on one side at a time. So that's the beauty of having a small chopping black block that I can simply place inside the bag to protect everything nicely so just to maybe i should have put the chopping block in the bag in the first place um but you get the gist so now i'm happy with the strap positioning i'm holding the strap in place really firmly with my finger there and i'm going to get my awl and i'm going to mark out these two holes of of the rivet hole the already existing rivet holes into the bag fabric here and just go ahead and press reasonably firmly so that I will see the all marks, the all punch marks in through the fabric. And then I can take everything away. And I don't know if you can see, but I certainly can. There are two hole pricks there left behind from the awl. So now all I need to do is go in with my awl and punch a hole that will accommodate the rivets. And as I said before, I'm being very careful to keep that hole as small as I can get away with. And if I haven't made a big enough hole in the first instance, no big deal. I can just simply go in and enlarge it. But obviously, if I make it too big to start off with, well, then it's kind of game over, really. So, as always, just just start small. Yep, I can see that that's a really, a really good, it's a snug fit. It's a slight, it's a slight jiggle to get it in but that's exactly what I want that's nice and snug so now I know that that's a good fit I'm going to bring the strap end back and I'm going to place I'm going to work on this hole first and I'm going to pop the rivet so I put so I put the underside of the rivet in through the lining side of my bag push all the way in so you can see it's just sticking out there and then I place the strap over that and then I get the, the top of the rivet, either cap or the hat or whatever you like to call it. And then I click it in place on the stalk and it will click. You'll hear a sound. There you go. Did you hear? Now I know that they're both married together and in place. The next thing I need to do is to get my anvil. So I'm using my favourite anvil, the double sided one. And because the base of this rivet is flat, because it's a single cap rivet, I have the flat side of the anvil facing upwards and I place that underneath 
the rivet base like so onto my chopping block and then I get my setting tool ensuring that I place the domed end of the setting tool smack bang on top of the rivet and this is where I get my hammer out and I'm going to tap it in place. Now, I'm always a little bit paranoid about the idea of the anvil not being exactly underneath the rivet because it is quite small. So there's absolutely nothing wrong with double checking that everything is in place before you go in with the hammer. So, and also it's very important that when you hold the post, you're comfortable with the position that it's in, in that the post is pointing straight upwards. You don't want it at an angle because otherwise that means that one part of the cap will be securely more, the, more so than the other. So take all of the time you need to make sure that you've got a firm grip on the hand setting tool and that the hand setting tool is pointing perfectly to 12 o'clock. And then you take your hammer and I'm going to tap squarely onto the post with a few short, sharp, firm taps. We do not bang for bang for merry hell and once or twice and hope for the best. It's always better to do a few short, sharp taps and then check to see how you're doing. So here we go. One, two, three. Now you can see they were quite they were quite firm, they were quite sharp, but I didn't just whack as hard as I could. And at this point, you can always check to see what the hold is like. And I can tell you already that is very, very firm. And I'm not sure you should be able to see that the base of the rivet that is attached so firmly to the cap that it's caused almost like a dimple in, in the lining fabric. And that's exactly if you, what you want. And if you are a bit of a superstitious person, which when it comes to making, I can be, it doesn't hurt just to give in another couple of taps just for good luck. One, two, there. And now I can assure you that this is on firmly. This is not a, this is not on and I'll hope for the best and make sure that the contents of my bag are light so the strap doesn't come off. I can assure you this is on very, very firmly. And there's no reason that this rivet is going to come out at any time because I made sure that I banged the two halves of the rivet together very firmly. And also I made the hole in the fabric as small as I could get away with. So I'm just going to repeat the procedure for the other side or the other rivet. So I'm just going to lift up this end make the hole for the bottom rivet just a little bit larger so I can fit in the bottom rivet. Looks like I'm going to have to enlarge a bit more, but that's no big deal. Just a tiny bit more, see how that fits. Of course, if you are using woven fabric on for your rivets, it's a good idea to reinforce your fabric. And my um, favourite interfacing for reinforcing um, for delicate, uh, delicate, but what will be high stress areas is woven fusible interfacing. That is going to give your fabric the best strength, but uh, the best drape but also the best strength. So I always recommend with using a layer or two of woven fusible interfacing, and that will give your woven fabric a lot of strength, plenty of strength to make sure that the rivets stay in place and behave the way that they should. Okay, so I've clicked the two halves of my second rivet down and I'm happy with their anvil position. I'm going to put the concave part of the setting tool onto the cap and I'm just going to bang maybe three times. One, and then 
and I'm just going to have a look, see how that looks. That looks nice. And then maybe I'll do another couple of sharp, strong taps. Another two for good luck. And there we go. That's how the underside looks. And that's how the front side looks. Just going to tilt the camera up again. And there we are. Perfectly professional, perfectly neat, absolutely functional in that the straps are on super securely. And aesthetically, I think you'll agree, really, really pleasing. There, so I hope that was all clear. And if you have any questions on using rivets, please let me know. Thanks for watching. Bye.